Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the solution to problem E, beautiful array from code forces round 954 division 3. In this problem we are given an array of integers and also an integer k and we need to make the array beautiful by applying the following operations. So at first we can shuffle the array and then we can increase values by k such that we want at some point the array to look like this where we have uh, the first value equal to the last, the second equal to the second last and so on and we want the minimum a number of operations to do this. Now in order to solve this problem we have a couple of simplifications we can make. First off, if we look at this condition this basically asks us to have some sort of a palindrome array like first equal to the last, second equal to the second last, and so on. So we can apply a lot of the knowledge we have from problems where we need to work around the idea of finding some palindrome numbers or some way to get a string to be a palindrome and so on. So in that case, this will be very helpful. Also, we have this invariant k. And basically every time we can increase values by k, so we can draw the conclusion that if two values have a different remainder modulo k then they will never be able to be equal because we can only increase by k every time. After we do this now we simplify the problem to solving the same problem independently for each remainder modulo k. But first off we will need to also make sure that all the remainders are even except for one because if you have uh, two odd uh, remainders, let's say 0 and 1, even if we have, uh, let's say, two trees and so on which group with each other, we will never be able to make the cut. It will simply not be a palindrome. So we need to also be careful at this side of things. Now, of course, uh, the answer can be very big because uh, if the numbers are very lopsided and k is small, then uh, the answer could grow very fast. So the answer has to be a long, long. Now we need to focus on how to solve the problem for certain remainders of k because if we can solve the problem for a remainder of k then we will be able to solve it for the other remainders as well. So if we know a set of numbers and we know that they all have the same remainder modulo k then in order to get pairs of values which are equal ideally we want to sort them at first. Why we want to sort them? Because it is always optimal to match a number with something relatively close to itself as a value. Because for example if we have 4, 6, 10, 12, 16, you don't really want to match 4 with 16 because you will need many operations to get from 4 to 16. However you would want to make something like this. Values are close to each other, it's pretty easy to get them to be equal. Now this will be the main idea behind the solution for a certain modulo. So if we have an even, even number of values, so even number, we can sort them and just group them like this. So uh, v1 minus v0, v2, v3 minus v2, v5 minus v4, and so on. So Basically, we can just group them and that will be case closed for the even modulo. However, if we, have an, uh, if we have an odd frequency for the modulo, we can't do this anymore because we need to discard one of the values. And what I mean by discarding, placing it in the middle. So we need to find a value such that, let's say if we have v0, v1, v2, v3, v4, let's say up to v6, we need to find which one of these we want to exclude in order to get to our optimal answer. We can't just try all of them because it may be the case that we have all of them have the same uh, remainder and that would be a way too slow for us. However, we can rely on some important observations. So if we remove some value, let's say we remove this one, we can use the approach for the even uh, case for the prefix and suffix and this will be a very important part of our solution because we will be able to compute prefix differences and suffix differences and of course prefix sums and suffix sums and we will have two cases 
We either have something like this, where we remove a value from an odd position, or an even if you use zero indexing, or we have something like this, where let's say if we remove uh, v3, then we will have something like this. We will be able to rely on prefix and suffix sums, but we will need to link these two together, because otherwise we won't be able to do this. Now, after we sorted this out, all we have to do is to uh, compute the solution for both of the cases, which will lead us to the final implementation. And basically, if you see here, I read the values, please be careful to use map. If you use an order map, you can get hacked. So we want to find the number of uh, odd frequencies. Again, if uh, that is at least, uh, there is at most one, we are good, otherwise not. Here, what I did was to sort the values by the frequency and just uh, just group them together according to the sorted order. And uh, then for the odd frequency, I computed the suffix differences, the prefix differences, and then I just had a case work depending on whether I remove an odd or an even position. As you, as you observe here, you need to be very careful at uh, dealing with uh, the uh, positions which are out of bounds because that could make things much more difficult. And also last but not least, we need to make sure that we print uh, the answer as we multiply it by, as we add it by the ratio between the minimum difference and K. Again, oh, this problem can seem very tricky at first, but once you reduce it to a problem where we need to basically find whether we can make the string a palindrome and then find the number of operations to get it done, things will become much easier. And also using prefix and suffix sums is not necessary because you can also make these without uh, that precomputation. I've seen solutions which are easier too, but again, this is what I had in contest and what worked for me in the first attempt. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell button so that you get access to all of the videos right away as soon as I upload them. Also, if you have any suggestions, feedback or any other kind of remark you want to share with me, please comment in the video or message me so that I know what my audience, audience wants in order to get a, a better view of the situation. Also, please check out the video I made for D as well, and uh, because I also explained there uh, an interesting problem with a very simple approach. Until the next time, stay safe, good luck, and have a great week. Cheers.